This is an example problem for finding TPHL, TPLH, T rise, and T fall of an inverter that's loaded with a capacitor. So we're given just a simple inverter with a PMOS and an NMOS, and we have a load capacitor. And we want to know the delay time uh, to both a low to high and a high to low, as well as the rise and fall time of this inverter. These are important to know because if there's too much delay or it takes too long to rise or fall, our inverter may not work as we want it to work. So we have the equations from class for TP, HL, and TP, LH. Now these equations are found from deriving the basic uh, exponential decay and exponential rise equations and filling in the certain constants. If you go back to the lecture slides, uh, it walks through the step-by-step -step derivations of these. So you can see we have these constants here, alpha n and alpha p, uh, and then we have the load capacitor, and it's divided by the kn prime times w over ln times vdd. Um, and this is just the time response of the current and how long it takes it to reach 50% uh, of the final value. So the equations for these alphas are also in the lecture slides. As you can see, they're very similar equations, but you need to make the negative the threshold for the PMOS positive, and otherwise they're the exact same equations. So let's find this. So for alpha n, we get 1.67. For alpha p, we get 1.74. These are off slightly just because our V thresholds are slightly different. Um, they'll normally be off slightly, but very slightly. Most of the time, you can just assume that these are going to be very close to the same. Uh, and that's why we can get away with finding the delay time as just the average of these two. Because they're very close, and we can just say that it's approximately the average. We get the TPHL of 1.62 nanoseconds. As you can see, there's a very small delay um, because this load capacitor is in picofarads. The predominant uh, source of the delay is this capacitor. So the smaller it is, 
the quicker our response will be. As you can see, our two uh, delay times for high to low and low to high are equivalent to the third significant figure. Um, they're off a little bit after that, but they're close enough that we can say that these are matched pairs. To find TP, just take the average of these two, TPHO and TPLH. Obviously, you just don't get 1.62 nanoseconds. So this is the delay time between when you put in an output and when you expect to, uh, when you put in an input and when you expect to see that at the output. So then take about 1.62 nanoseconds. So this is important to know because if you're gonna have, say, a bunch of inverters together or an inverter going into a NAND or a NOR or something like that, there's gonna be a slight time delay. Now we need to find the rise time and the fall time. So to do that, we're gonna remember that the curve of the transient response to this is going to be exponential. You're gonna have something that, an input that looks like this. So this is the input and this is time and this is low and this is high, and your output is going to be exponential up, it's going to reach pretty close to the top, and it's going to trigger, and it's going to go down exponentially. This is your output. So this time delay here is just the distance between the start, the trigger, and Oh, excuse me, this is an inverter. So your output would look like this. It doesn't actually change how you calculate TP um, or rise and fall time because they're symmetrical. But so the important thing for delay time is the 50% mark. When we're looking at rise and fall time, we're looking at 90% to 10% for fall time and 10% to 90% for rise time. And how we're going to get these rise times and fall times is we're going to find the time delay of this exponential function, the tau. And so if you remember, um, from prior classes, you can calculate tau of an exponential based on some t known time. In this case, we know that at 50%, it's going to be 1.62 nanoseconds after zero, or 100% in this case. So we can say that tau is equal to negative TP because we're going from high to low, and to make the units work out. The ln of 0.5, this ln, because it's exponential, it's e to the t. So if we want to find tau as a function of t, we need this ln. And 0.5, because it's 50% of the maximum. So that's going to give us a tau of 2.34 nanoseconds. As you can see, this tau is greater than our tp. Uh, that makes sense because the TP is just a 50%, where tau is normally around 65% of the total. So your tau should be slightly larger than your TP. Then using this tau, we can find our rise time and fall time by using more natural log equations. So because our TPHL and our TPLH are equal to each other, we can say that our rise time 
is going to equal our fall time because our PMOS and NMOS are matched. So they'll show the same characteristics. So to calculate that, we'll just do tau of ln of 0.9, which is 90%, minus the tau times ln of 0.1, which is 10%. And so that's just going from our 90% marker to our 10% marker. And it's just the difference between the times it takes. And so that gives us 5.14 nanoseconds. So we have our delay times here. And we have our rise and fall times here. As you can see, our rise and fall times are actually quite a bit more than our delay times. And that's because exponential functions are slower and slower the closer they get to the, their final value. So to go from 90% to 10% actually takes quite a bit longer than just go from 100% to 50%. And the same for the rise time.